Welcome everybody, super excited. Welcome or welcome back to Cladesk, your number one channel for full latest technology courses. My name is Syed and I'm gonna be talking about data classification and some of the best practices because in the real world, it's very, very important to have this skill. So that's, before we actually talk about data classification, when you actually start to look at the best practices for creating securing and efficient architectures, one of the first thing you should really look at is to understand the value and the importance of the data you're working with. Now, not all data is necessarily created equal. We know that, right? As some must be stored with some care than others like confidential data, availability, and so on. So let me give an example. When looking after credit card information or personal health information, PII, you want to be particularly careful with it and spend extra resources ensuring right its governance and protection and of course there are laws around it right like HIPAA laws and gdpr and so on but if you have hundreds of gigabytes of clickstream data for example that doesn't really exactly have national secrets tied to it right you can afford to be more relaxed with this particular type of data now this data doesn't need to be under the same kind of scrutiny that the credit card information in fact, you were to try to treat all data the same way, your budget would balloon up, right? It would just go, you know, skyrocketing as you attempt to apply the highest level of protection of data that it really doesn't require. So we need to talk about the data classification. So let's go to the next uh, step where we'll take a look at some of the best practices. Now, when classifying data, you should create as many different levels as your solution requires. What this means is that this could be as simple as just having two types. For example, you could classify your data as confidential or non-confidential, -con that's pretty straightforward. Or having more granular levels of control such as maybe secret, protected, confidential, uh, confidential or public, right? And now each of these levels might allow end users and internal employees different methods of control and access requirements. For example, you could have, if you're working within AWS, you can have IAM policies, right? Um, on the secret end of things, this data might only be accessible from on-premise or through the corporate VPN, while the public data is something that anyone who has access uh, to the external website will be able to see. Now, let's take a look at the, the basic three different data classifications, right? So keeping it simple, some practice, for data classification are that it should be easy to understand and you should be able to simply explain your data classification levels with just a few sentences. Now, performing a risk assessment, for example, of your data, there can be uh, severe legal and regulatory consequences for data breaches or just accidentally leaking data or user personal information. Now, once you know your categories of your data, right, what should you you know, do with it, right? Reevaluate your data on a regular basis. That's what you need to do. So that's pretty important because your data profile might change over time as your application business model or even laws change. Suddenly something that was, you know, like no big deal before might need to be moved into a more secure data category, right? So that's like best practices for data classification. Let's move forward with an example. I'm gonna talk about AWS data security, for example, right? So once you have you know, classified your data, now you can set up appropriate levels of protection that your data deserves. And I talked about briefly the IAM, or the Identity and Access Management within AWS, for example, if you're using AWS Cloud. Um, similarly, if you're using Azure or any other cloud platform, you would have various levels of data security. So probably the easiest way to secure data within AWS, for example, is to make sure it is encrypted. For many services, it is literally just a click away, right? For example, if you're using a relational database service like RDS, you can enable encryption at rest and it's all for free, although you have to enable it at creation time. Now, this encryption uses industry standard AES-256 encryption algorithm to simply ensure all your underlying storage, automated backups and replicas and snapshots are protected. Now, Amazon RDS has support for transparent data encryption for SQL Server and Oracle as well. And keep in mind that this encryption mode allows the server to automatically encrypt data before it is written to storage, right? This is pretty extremely useful in case a bad actor, for example, or a hacker 
have the ability to read data from the drive itself, right? Another general best practice, by the way, for security of your databases is to encrypt your data in transit. Now that means you should keep the communication between your application and your database encrypted using SSL or TLS. And Amazon RDS, once again, is responsible for creating an SSL certificate that is installed on the database creation. So pretty straightforward, right? Pretty secure. Now, when you attempt to connect with the database by launching the MySQL client, for example, you can simply launch it using the SSL parameter. All right, let's take a look at some of the common security issues that you may have with Amazon DynamoDB. It's another tool within AWS. So much is the same for Amazon DynamoDB. It is it basically provides encryption of all your data at rest by default. You should also have the option to use your own custom keys or encrypt your data based on you know, maybe regulatory compliance reasons, right? It also uses the 256 encryption and provides single digit millisecond latency, by the way. So you shouldn't have to worry about any bottlenecks from the encryption side of things. Now, DynamoDB has a client side encryption library that helps you protect your table data before you send it to Amazon DynamoDB. It basically encrypts or the attribute values, right, for each item in the table using a unique encryption key. Now, this data can be sent to DynamoDB without worry of external parties or even AWS themselves seeing plain text information. So that's another way you can take a look at some of the common security issues within Amazon DB. All right, next is your you know, TDOS attacks. And it's a common issue these days that you might experience is not necessarily someone trying to steal or compromise your data, but to stop access to it altogether. You know, all these attackers or hackers perform DDoS attacks for a variety of reasons, but in the end, basically, if you can weather the storm, everything will be all right, right? So when thinking about protection, your databases or protecting your databases rather from these attacks, you need to try to limit the attackable surface as much as possible. That means deploying your architectures in a layered fashion. So you must have layers upon layers of security where you can control the flow of traffic within your network. And that's pretty, pretty important. And this is the way you would be able to basically prevent from all these DDoS attacks, right? Or any other attacks. And basically specifying the allowable traffic and controlling by the security groups of the individual you know, EC2 instances, for example, and will look something like maybe traffic comes into port 443 from a load balancer or even directly from DNS, which can come from anywhere on the internet. The web server, for example, will just simply send the HTTP traffic on port 80, which is an open port, right, to the app tier, and that flows through the database with TCP on port 3306. So this type of setup would, of course, protect your network from these type of attacks, right? All right, next is AWS Threat Research. And creating secure applications, by the way, that interact well within your database requires years of experience. And it, yeah, there's no shortcut and a host of knowledge also. And one of the primary worries besides allocating the right amount of throughput for the database is protection against the SQL injection attacks, right? We talked about DDoS and there's another type, which is the SQL injection attacks. These attacks basically make up two thirds of all the attacks against web applications in the world, right? And within the amount of pressure that developers can be put under to create prototypes and minimal viable products to basically just get something out there, right? They can leave their data up for grabs if they're unaware. So AWS basically web application firewall, also known as the WAF, is a service that gives you control over the type of traffic that is allowed to your application. So yes, another way you can classify your data and then of course, secure your data accordingly. Next is the MFA and IM security. Now these are pretty straightforward and you probably use it from day in day out, which is multi-factor authentication and then the identity access management. So a potential serious security concern is basically the malicious or accidental deletion of a production database. That's pretty severe. Even if you have been you know, for example, up to date and keeping the backups, the amount of downtime and potential lost transactions could be really tremendous or disastrous to your application or the company in general, right? 
So just as a reminder, by the way, it is extremely important to have appropriate RPO and RTO standards set up with these expectations. And of course, service level agreements made apparent to your customers where applicable. So this is another way you could actually not only classify, but also secure your data. All right, so best security measures that we have. This is probably one of the classic example of a new intern that you hire that deletes all of your production data, right? Uh, is what always comes to mind when, of course, I think of the least privileges. So in terms of access, you need to work on this methodology of least privilege access. So when creating users that can access dangerous part of your architecture, such as a database, for example, make sure they can only change or modify what is necessary, right? Do not give them extra access to things that they don't require. So some services like DynamoDB, they allow extremely fine grained access, even to granting permissions like read only or write only access to certain attributes in a specified table, right? So you can really dig deep down into as far as securing your databases. So for example, you might have several groups set up with various permissions according to your own requirement, right? And that's where you can further secure your end classify and then secure your data. All right, next is Amazon Guard Duty. And this is probably one of the last things I want to touch base on uh, fairly quickly. Amazon Guard Duty is an automated machine learning based security service that monitors VPC flow logs, cloud trail and DNS query logs to simply look for unauthorized access and activity. Very powerful tool. So definitely go ahead and take a look at it. When you log on to management console, uh, find the Amazon Guard Duty and take a look at it. It can basically protect you by noticing strange behavior trends from internal AWS accounts as well as external traffic within your network. Because Amazon Guard Duty can notify you, by the way, also based on CloudWatch rules that you specify with Amazon SNS, sending you an email when it does detect suspicious behavior. So very, very powerful tool to so definitely go ahead and take a look at that because it simply breaks down the security into various categories so it's easy for you to analyze right all right perfect so yeah that's all i have so quickly wrapping up when you classify data basically the concept is to create different categories different levels of your data as your solution or your project requires and then of course granting access accordingly to individuals that are working within the company and this could be as simple as you know classifying as confidential or non-confidential or even uh, moving down to more granular level so that your data is not only classified properly, but also secure. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Syed, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.